Hi everyone, it's Sam Mackay here uh, with Greg Filtz. Greg is one of our enterprise DNA experts and what I thought would be uh, a great idea would be to go through some of Greg's latest challenge submissions. And uh, this, this will just be one of, of a few videos, hopefully, um, because there's just seriously so much great stuff uh, within all of Greg's uh, reports that we can go through. And um, you know, I, I wanna make sure that the world gets to learn a little bit more about some, you know, how, how to create high quality reports that honestly aren't that too, aren't too complicated, um, aren't too filled with huge amounts of visuals and text, et cetera. You know, simple designs can sometimes work really, really well. And that's what uh, I wanted to touch upon, first of all, with Greg in this particular tutorial is almost like how, how less can sometimes be more inside of Power BI. So with that, I'll just uh, turn you over to, to Greg to talk about, you know, a little bit about his philosophy and um, how you can just use really simple colors and sometimes just even white, white coloring um, to really showcase uh, really interesting and compelling insights. So Greg, take it away. Thank you very much, Sam. Um, and thank you very much for the kind words. Um, my kind of philosophy is that you want to try and limit uh, the visuals that you have on a page kind of as much as you can. Um, people generally, uh, I think I've heard the rule of threes, that um, if you have more than three things being displayed on something, it's difficult for people to pick out the piece. So, I mean, uh, the piece of interest, I guess. So in my challenge eight submission, for example, one of the things I did was I leveraged uh, a little bit of Python I've been learning to come up with a ring chart. And I only showed three percentages in that because again, I was hoping not to overwhelm the user with choices and make it pretty easy for them to choose one or the other. Um, and I did the same by providing extra categorizations for um, priority and status and type that had many different values. I basically grouped them all into threes and then used those in the bar charts, or sorry, the column charts that you see at the bottom of the page. Um, That's really interesting. That's actually really interesting, Greg. So this is a good one. Um, uh, you know, definitely a good learning is that the, these these dimensions weren't in your raw data. You actually created these groups to that's right. break it down into, into threes. That's right. I think there were five priorities and I think there were something like 13 different statuses and uh, nine different types or something like that. But I, I put uh, a categorization on top of them so that there were three. So it was pretty obvious to people what uh, category things uh, were predominantly falling into. Great. Yeah, no, that's the, I, you know, whenever you see reports with huge amounts of colors and uh, the legend is so huge, it really detracts from the insight that you're trying to show. So to me, that's a huge learning um, that, um, you know, that, that can really make your, your key insights stand out. Yeah, it's a thing. It's, it's something that it's, it kind of comes from the audience. Uh, that doesn't kind of come, it totally will come from the audience, but um, I generally find that if you have a really complicated report, you're talking to really knowledgeable people who probably know their data very well anyway. If your report is going to be intended for people that are looking for things at a summary level, then just give mm -hmm. them summary data. Yeah, love it. Um, totally. Couldn't agree yeah. more. So uh, just to get, continue on with that theme, um, <laughs> no pun intended, um, I chose to keep everything white here um, mm -hmm. because I've found that uh, for me anyway, I end up investing an awful lot of time in choosing colors. Um, I chose this time to just basically use white. And um, as uh, you can see from the notes that I put in here, I actually didn't choose a color theme myself. I went to Pantone's website and said, what was the, what was the, the color of the year in 2020? And mm -hmm. lo and behold, it was right there. So literally choosing my theme was going to Pantone's website saying, what did you use? And I picked it from there. Great. Right. Yeah. Now, one, one question I've got uh, on, on this particular report, Greg, is how do you create the shadowed boxes? 
Uh, that's just a simple shadow on any of the visuals there. So okay, right. That's uh, where is it here? Come on. No, it didn't come up. Oh, that's a Python one. That's why. Sure. There it is. So it's just here. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's just, it's a, just going a off on an individual. Right. On a, okay. And Easy. I think, yeah, right. you can actually change the color of the shadow. I've never actually done anything but mm -hmm. uh, the main color, but you can you can choose a theme color if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, you can screw around with the placements and put it inside the box, outside the box, whatever. That way, That's if right. you have it inside, it looks like it's in, um, the, um, the box is inside the page rather than outside. Mm -hmm. But uh, for yeah, me, it's I really just like as long as it's consistent. Pardon me? Yeah, it, yeah I really like that technique because it, it really highlights, because you, you, as you know, I'm, I'm big on creating grids within your reports. And I think yes. that uh, it, really, it really showcases the grids uh, very effectively exactly. when you add that simple shadow. I, I totally agree. Um, just to build on that as well, I also make very extensive use of the formatting pane. Mm -hmm and of the, uh, the general section within here to very clearly adjust the positions X, Y, width and height to be multiples mm -hmm. of 10 pixels for everything so that I can make sure it's really easy for me to see that all my visuals are aligned, that they're all the same height, that there's all the same spacing in between them. This one uh, I think has a 20 pixel border between every visual. So mm -hmm. uh, I find that that looks um, great myself and uh, also one of the comments I seem to get unfortunately back from uh, report consumers often is hey these things aren't lined up if they're not lined up how can I trust that the work that you're doing is right so it really takes me no effort <laughs> at all to use yeah. the general section here set everything to 10 it's not perfect it's not as good as it could be but it mm -hmm. gets me over the hurdle of having an audience uh, talk about my spacing. Yeah, look, I, and I see this uh, uh, so, so often, you know, having things uh, out of alignment just detracts so much from your report, the, the, the way that your report can be engaged with and, and reviewed. And so just some simple, simple al aligning things well inside of grids uh, is, is just so crucial. And it just adds so much more, so much to your report so easily. I think it's I think it's really essential myself. Yeah. It's one of the first things I, I try to do. Mm -hmm. um, with this you. solution as well, one of the other things that I, I was really happy with was the, the simple Chevron navigation here. Mm -hmm. So as you can um, remember from the various submissions I've done, I've done some pretty involved navigation things. Yeah. Uh, for different submissions, but uh, this one was actually the easiest one that I did. And it's simple, greater than, and less than signs. They're not images, they're just different colors. Mm -hmm. um, so when I hover over it, it bounces a bit from gray to white, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And other than that, it's just a, a less than sign in a different font. Yeah, I, I, love, I love, I love the well. simplicity. The simplicity yeah. of this navigation experience was so original um, when, I, when I first, first saw it. Uh, I appreciate that very much, but thank you um, for that comment. I did. I actually can't claim uh, the idea myself. Microsoft Teams has it. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I, uh, I, 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 I remember I, I personally did something similar in, a, in one of my challenge submissions as well. Yes. Uh, and I, look, I literally just copied it off uh, some other um, website that I saw. So there's, that's where there's I got no... some of the inspiration for this was I always <laughs> really like that. I keep I keep saying this. There is absolutely no shame in leveraging off what others are what others are doing. Right. It's just there's, there's the, the, that's exactly what you should do if you're trying to look for some inspiration um, around well, your report well, designs and stuff. Totally. I think that uh, you know any report is only as good as the people that are using it when they're using mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. ideally, I would not like to write a report and have it still being used in three years the same way. Right. I would hope that yeah. it would be updated continually as people find certain visuals are better. Uh, they'd like to see different things. Um, you'd be 
changing the report as you go. So I have no problem leveraging. So I mm -hmm. think that's a great thing to do. Um, and the more simple, uh, the more you can make it like an application, the easier it is going to be for people to, to use. And it's going to be result in less time for the report developer to have to support users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, right. And the users can extract more value right on day one in the report if they don't have to, to ask a whole lot of questions about how to get around. Mm. So. Agreed, agreed. Now, Greg, just to round off this particular um, video, do you want to maybe just highlight a few, just a, a few other design philosophies that you have, either within, you could showcase something within this report or, or another submission that you've done? Because I know you've submitted an, um, some uh, reports to a number of the challenges and, and also won a, cup, a, cu a couple or you've won, won one challenge or two? I'm not, I can't remember. I've won one and I've been fortunate, yeah. I've been fortunate enough to win one and I've been fortunate enough to have uh, kind of an honorable mention, I guess, in a few of the others. Um, yep. And Great. really, I, I think the one thing that's really um, constant about all of them is the grid approach that you have. I suppose that regardless of whether I'm going with a simple or complicated color theme, uh, I seem to do everything in grids very well. I think I've got to the happy place right now where I'm using the, as we, as we look before at the, uh, the general the formatting general section where we make sure that everything's are in increments of 10 pixels. It's perfect. Very easy to do. Doesn't take long and I don't have to worry about my eyeballs. Uh, thinking about whether something's lined up or not. Um, I can see from the numbers when something's wrong. And also by choosing a 10 or a 20 pixel boundary or something like that, it's really obvious when something's not in the right place. Mm -hmm. So uh, that works. Probably one do of the have, best. Do you, have an, do you have one other one of your other reports open that we could maybe just have a look at just as a bit of a contrast to this one? And then uh, I think um, I'll get another one open here. Sure. Okay. And then I think I mean there's there's so many other things we can dive into here, but I think you know just in terms of uh, the theme of, of this particular video, um, I think it'd be it'd be good just to just to show one sort of contrasting report where you've used a lot of similar techniques, um, but things look a little bit different. This is, um, this is uh, my challenge five submission coming up here, which is also um, mainly white, but instead of, um, instead of using a color theme, it pretty much uses just grays. Yeah. Um, I have a, um, a background image uh, that was chosen just a black uh, frame for mm -hmm. um, a pair of glasses and use that as the background. And uh, then I used uh, semi-transparent visuals for, um, for all the yeah, visuals on cool. top. And this is one of the big things that I, I've really learned, especially with the challenges, is most of the, like, easily, the you know, there's been so many good submissions, but all the top ones over over all of the different challenges generally use colors in a very limited way. There's no significant, you know, no significant use of over colors. And I, I think that's a, a really big learning for everyone out there um, who's, who's, who's sort of watching this and, and wants to, you know, design some, some really effective reports is, is just use, use colors um, in a lot less limit, you know, a much, much reduced way than what you think. I kind of am gravitating there. Like, I mean, I love doing color work and I spent a lot of time uh, during my first year or so with Power BI doing a lot of color work. But if you take a look at this uh, report, for example, uh, I did use colors on the buttons for navigation up at the top here. I'm kind of wishing I didn't because it kind of detracts. I'm actually very happy with this report only having color being shown twice once to draw the eye to the fact that something is overdue mm -hmm. and once for the standard blue, meaning I can do something with it. Mm -hmm. to a link. So in this case, it's uh, drill through. Right click, you can drill through on it. 
Mm. Oops, I missed it. Sorry. Yeah, uh, there, there's, there, there's certainly some some aspects in this report. I know that I want to I want to create some follow up um, uh, videos with you because I know you you created this innovative exporting export to power, uh, PDF um, section as well. But I uh, but I I hesitate to go into that in this one because um, you know I just want I want the key takeaways to, here to be around sort of the less is more thing the. The, the, you know, you just don't need to pack everything into your Power BI reports to make them look good. I mean, you can just keep it pretty simple with, um, with, with colors and grids and, um, you know, and, in, and information. So, but yeah, yeah so this, this aspect of page. the report was, was awesome. We just pulled that page in a different uh, size because I figured that people might want to print things. So, you know, exactly. Uh, yeah. People in offices that I've been in have uh, things that are printed. Uh, portrait is a default for printers. And whenever right. they want something the landscape, they end up printing it in portrait. It looks terrible. They go back and do it again. Page size to be that way the first time. Yeah, definitely. I want to. We we will do a follow up uh, follow up session on this particular page. Um. So I think why don't we round things off here, Greg? I mean, there's there's so much additional stuff we could go into here. I mean, you've obviously put a huge amount of effort into these, so we will in time. Um. But I think today's session. Um. Today's sort of very very short workshop is a is a uh, there's a lot of learnings that uh, that others can take away so um so appreciate appreciate you running through and um showcasing some of your amazing challenge work i appreciate the opportunity and thank you very much everybody and um power bi <laughs> nice one nice one well thanks uh thanks again and uh don't uh, if, if you enjoyed working through this content um, def uh, definitely throw the video a like, really appreciate it. Really helps us here at Enterprise DNA. And don't forget to also subscribe to the channel. Got a lot of um, great content coming up, a lot, of, lot more collaborations. Um, there'll be more showcases from, from, from Greg uh, for sure. So really looking forward to getting that, uh, getting that out to you as soon as we can. Okay, all the best everyone.